Hello, Carlo. Those two words are among the most memorable lines in what many feel is the greatest film of all time. Gianni Russo played Carlo Rizzi, Don Corleone's son-in-law in the Francis Ford Coppola masterpiece, The Godfather. Although his iconic performance defined his character, Gianni's personal life reads more like a screenplay in itself. We're riding with the Hollywood Godfather, who Marlon Brando initially called this guy, and the Mafia called the kid. But like us, you'll call him a tastemaker. Gianni Russo, how are you? I'm great, as always, thank God. Thank um. God. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Patsy's, one of my favorite restaurants in New York. My idol is Frank Sinatra early on, and he created a dish called veal melanese with arugula and fresh tomatoes on top. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's I'm hungry roll. too. Celebrity Tastemakers is about the person behind the personality. And with you, that person is more fascinating than any on-screen character. You know, it's so funny because I don't even know who that character is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Your memoir, Hollywood Godfather, it reads like an author's imagination gone wild in a fiction book. But this is your real life. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I wrote it in 95 the first time. And then I kept elaborating on it. And then my kids were maturing and I said, you know what, I'm gonna wait a while. And then I was told to wait a while by certain people because they didn't want to mention it in the book. And uh, it reads like Goodfellows meets Forrest Gump. As a child, you spent five years in a hospital isolated with polio, but that was a time when that was more of a death sentence. Why do you think that you survived? Well, I'm spiritually so locked yeah. to church and God and and I, I think my belief in that really made me want to leave and live. And that's why I, I know so many doctors because they're interested in how I did this. And Dr. Tawari was a, a genius for me. I'll tell you something that's not in the book. I got shot about six years ago in front of my building, six times. Six and times. I was in New York Presbyterian within five minutes. And thank God they got him because he's a urologist and they shot me all through my lower stomach, even on the operating room. They never thought I'd come out of it. And he does all that robotic mm -hmm, operation. Sure. And that was all new. If I got shot 10 years before that, I would have bled out. You found an unlikely father figure in Frank Costello. Yeah, he was such a gentle man until I, I it was months later until I found out who he was. The old timers, I know them all, I mean, from Sicily to here, they're not the Tony Sopranos, let's put it that way. Most newcomers forget that Cosa Nostra is a secret organization. <laughs> all these young guys, they destroyed that thing of theirs. My lawyer always keeps saying, don't say that thing of ours, because I was not in it. Everybody thinks I was made. They wanted to give me a button. I said, I don't even use a zipper. I don't want a button. <laughs> they <get> a button. <laughs> I want my kids to understand what I went through, especially my last two kids, mm -hmm. because that's when I had to leave the country. But now it's time to say, you know, if you want to talk to daddy, I'm here. Right. And I really want to. Yeah, I really want to. So I there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of things that they may read that they had no yeah, idea. They had no idea why I left, especially my, uh, my, my last two kids. There's a chapter in the book called My Involvement in the Crime of the Century. Kennedy. I know, I can't believe that. I mean, to me, you know, again, I, I, I always, kept my mouth shut. I thought for the longest time I was gonna grow up to have the shortest neck in the world. Because I said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Indirectly, I was part of this thing without knowing, thank God. I mean, I was questioned by everybody for a long time. What did you say? Oh. Well, I don't know, I said, I didn't. <laughs> say, there it goes again. I <laughs> no, but so true, I didn't know. It was, it was, I didn't have to lie, you could put a lie detector on me, everything. I did not know. As a guy who always kept his mouth shut, those are your words. You're quite talkative in this memoir. I don't care anymore. I mean, people, what are they gonna to do to me? I mean, so many people say, aren't you afraid of this one and that one? You're talking to a guy that spent three days in Pablo Escobar's torture chamber, and, and Gotti thought I'd never come home. That's the only why he re arranged the trip, John Gotti. The funniest story, when he wanted to meet Marlon Brando when we were shooting the freshman on Mulberry Street. So now I'm looking at John Gotti and my father-in-law, Don Corleone, <laughs> a fictitious godfather, and they watch Monday Night Football together. The last sentence in the book is, yes, you can. If you believe in yourself, go do it. 
I want people, especially young kids today, because you know, everybody's saying if you don't have these diplomas, you can't get anywhere. Everything is education, which I, I totally encourage education. I've had none. Don't use that as an excuse. If you have a dream, think of yourself and go for it. But what's crazy about this whole thing is that the movie The Godfather may not have been made if it wasn't for you. That was definite. No, <laughs> I, I got to Joe Colombo's ego and greed. Then we negotiated a deal, and if I got the deal on, I was to play Michael Sonia Carlo. What's your favorite movie line from there? I like what Brando always said, you know, I like the quotes about a man's not a man unless he spends time with his family. I'm that good person. I didn't. I didn't have the privilege to. Marlon Brando thought you were giving your own personal audition to him. Well, there wasn't an, an addition, exactly. believe me. What happened in that table read, Brando comes walking over to me. He said, you're a big TV actor. I said, no. You got a big movie coming out. I said, no. He said, who'd you study with? I said, study what? <laughs> so he called Coppola over. He says, Francis, this guy's playing my son. He said, yeah, I know. And he was very reluctant because he knew he couldn't find me. Mm. He broke down the script as a thespian. He marries my daughter. He undermines our family. He sells out my oldest son to the Barzinis, gets him killed when we don't cooperate. I think you should rethink this. And I don't know protocol on the, on the set. I dismissed the director. I said, Francis, go over there a minute. I put my arm around Brando, and I walked into the back of the room because I didn't want to insult the guy in front of everybody. And the whole room, you could hear a pin drop. But you know, everybody's like saying, who the F is this guy? And I turned him around in a very low voice because I don't want to draw any attention. I said, let me just tell you something, okay? You F this up for me. I will suck on your heart. If I get fired, I'll kill you. He stepped back. I thought he was going to call a cop. He said, that was brilliant. You could really do this part. That was great. He thought I was acting. <laughs> <laughs> you were being real. And that's how I got my part. <laughs> Your on-screen relationship with Sonny and your real-life relationship with James Caan. No, it's not, not too far off. That fight scene was a little realistic. It went beyond the script. It went way beyond the script. And Jimmy, I don't know what he had with this problem with me. He thought he was Sonny Corleone. Because he really hurt me, and he didn't have to. But again, I thought it was acting. I never acted before. Mm -hmm. So when he first chipped my elbow with the garbage bill cover, I said, whoa, this is crazy, man. Then when he drop kicks me and I roll over into the hydrant, he lifted me up, broke two ribs on me, and we choreographed this for two days. Where is that garbage can cover now? It's on my bar. It's on your bar, you oh, still have it. It took me a long time to get it. Everyone always remembers where they were on 9-11. You were with oh my a God. former president. Bill Clinton, man. Oh. My man, Bill. <laughs> Nobody has charisma like Clinton. And I, I heard it until I hung out. I was with him for five days. But we parted a lot. <laughs> what was your reaction when Hillary Clinton's people tried to ask you about it? Well, that was a joke. We just did Howard Stern. Just got off the air. One of our assistants called me and said, Mrs. Clinton is very upset with you. Her and Bill have a, an arrangement that they don't speak about his escapades in public. I said, great, I don't have an arrangement. We're hung up. So they called me back. They said, when she becomes president, you're going to regret that. I said, tell her this. When she becomes president, I'm leaving the country. Oh <laughs> and I hung up again. <laughs> Are you a romantic? Oh, yeah. What's left of my kids? <laughs> no, most of my it. kids were conceived on my boat, which is wild. The same place? Same boat. Same yeah. Same <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, after all that, finish this sentence for me. Before I die, I'd like to... Well, you asked a good question. Before I die, I want to have a best-selling book, win an Oscar for a movie that I wrote or a part of, which hopefully it's this one, and keep helping people that need help that don't want to help themselves. But I think if you want to help yourself, I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> we're approaching Patsy's. It kind of makes me think, when was the last time you were in a vehicle with all these cameras? Uh, it was about 48 years ago, Longfellow Road on Staten Island. Mm -hmm. And Michael came to see me. 
and he told me he was sending me to Vegas. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> I get to the car, and when I saw Clemenza in the back seat, I said, oh. And I got in the car, unfortunately, like you're saying, you didn't see this in the movie, but all these lights and cameras were mounted on the hood of the car. Mm -hmm. Of course, Francis wanted the authenticity of my feet going through the windshield. When I got in the car today and saw all these lights, I started to feel glass in my shoes again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time. Pleasantly, I'm sitting up straight and I'm gonna be able to walk out and have a great meal now. <laughs>